Now, as far as the camera control goes, hey, guess what? Three days later, it's still stupid. Sorry, I'm not gonna give you guys any excuses. It's just pointless. Three days with the iPhone 15 and a half Pro Max, things have changed from my previous update video that I did, so let's talk about it. <laughs> The iPhone 16 series pre-order sales have been low and honestly, I get it. Apple releasing a product without AI, even though they spent most of their showcase talking about AI, is a little bit strange. This phone right now is really good, but does that mean you should drop everything that you're doing and rush out to the Apple store to pick one up? Absolutely not. But what you should do is definitely hit that subscribe button because I just saved you a thousand dollars. Now I do have to admit, the iPhone 16 Pro Max running iOS 18 has been incredibly smooth. This is by far the most smoothest experience that I've had on iPhone. And at first, not gonna lie, I thought it was a placebo effect because, you know, new must be faster. But no, actually, my friend messaged me the same thing. So if you have the iPhone 16 Pro series, definitely let me know how your experience has been in terms of speed and fluidity, because personally, I find that my iPhone 16 Pro Max running iOS 18 just feels more snappy than my iPhone 15 Pro Max running iOS 18. Now, Apple did mention that the phone is more durable than ever before. And look, we've heard this many times before, even with the iPhone 15 series. And hey, Apple, guess what? My iPhone 15 Pro Max looks like an atomic bomb went off inside. So uh, don't be stupid like me. Use protection. <laughs> This is the Taurus 360 spin case, and in fact, Taurus is the original brand for the O-shaped stand cases. I've been using Taurus cases on all of my phones, and I love it because it just has this nice, unique new design to it, and it's also kind of like a multi-tool. First of all, it's a case, but it's also MagSafe capable, and the ring doubles as a grip for when you use the capture button, and it even works as a kickstand for watching vertical and horizontal content. The MagSafe magnets are not only crazy strong, but they also support the new Qi 2 wireless charging so you get the most efficient charge directly to your iPhone without losing a lot of the energy. Taurus also sells the Glass Go screen protector which I have on my iPhone 16 Pro Max right now and this might be the easiest screen protector you can ever install. You just snap it on your phone, pull the tab and that's it. You now have a high quality screen protector that has 100% coverage and it doesn't ruin the quality of your screen like some other screen protectors do. Now if you guys are interested I'll have a link down below for you to pick up so your phone does not end up like my old iPhone did. Thanks Apple for giving people business. <laughs> During my three days, especially after the first day, you know, the first day is always the honeymoon, right? You get you get a new shiny toy in, and you're like, ooh, playing around with it. But you know, after these three days, the honeymoon period kind of ended, which is strange because the honeymoon period for like technology, for me at least, lasts around a week, maybe two weeks. Then you kind of start to simmer down. But with the iPhone 16 Pro Max, there's not really any like standout features, honestly. I'm not saying it's a bad phone, but it just it just plays a little too safe. Sure, the ultra wide camera got bumped to 48 megapixels from the 12 megapixels that the iPhone 15 Pro had. But I mean, take a look at these two ultra wide photos. Both are taking in the maximum resolution. Uh, which iPhone is the 15 Pro Max and which is the 16 Pro Max? It's kind of hard to tell a difference. So would you call that one of the standout features of the 16 Pro Max? Personally, I wouldn't. The low pre-order sales figures kind of make sense because this phone didn't really change all that much from previous Pro models. I mean, I've even had people message me with the iPhone 13 Pro saying that, hey, I'm not gonna upgrade. And look, I don't blame you. Honestly, during my three days, one of the most standout features to me is definitely, it, it has to be the audio mix. The, this is the one of the most underrated features ever. The ability for AI and machine learning to focus on your voice is honestly incredible and no other phone does it best, especially because audio mix is on all the time. Like there's no video modes where it can't process that audio mix. It's on no matter which resolution, no matter which frame rate. So right now I am in my bathroom. You guys should be able to hear a ton of echo going on. And then uh, this is like the standard profile. So if I switch over to in, uh, in frame, it should kind of hear a lot less echo and more of my voice. This is just from a press of a button. Um, I never tried this, but I'm actually going to turn on the fan inside this echoey bathroom and we'll see how well the iPhone gets rid of the fan. So 
Right now, you should hear an uh, echo and a fan, and theoretically, right now, you should hear my voice a lot better. So let me know how well the iPhone performed. I honestly cannot believe how good the iPhone 16 Pro Max can do that audio mix, especially by just tapping a button. I can't even do that on Final Cut Pro. I had to buy a program for $50 to get rid of the echo in this room, and it just barely gets it done. But Apple came out of nowhere, and they're like, hey, just click a button, and all your audio problems go away. Now, if only they can make my debt go away. Hey, Apple, business idea right there. Now, in terms of the cameras, I've taken probably hundreds of photos on the iPhone 16 Pro Max by now, and I've honestly been super impressed. So not only did the ISP improve on most of everything, especially HDR, but the detail on the 5X lens has also improved. Apple's 5X lens was always kind of lacking behind the competition, but it does seem to have gotten better this time around, which is definitely great to hear. Low light photos have also improved with keeping detail while removing noise, so that's always a bonus. So if you didn't know, since the ultra wide camera is 48 megapixels, you can now take 48 megapixel macro photos, but it doesn't work the way you think it does. So let me kind of explain because some people are going to get this wrong and they're not gonna get the full resolution. You first have to enable Heath Max, then tap on the ultra wide lens, and then you can go ahead and get close to your subject. This does not work in auto mode, so make sure you turn off auto macro mode because that mode automatically defaults to 12 megapixels, so turn that off so you have full control of your camera and resolution. HDR in selfie photos have also been improved at least when compared to the Pixel 9 Pro XL, which wasn't something I was expecting because Pixels are always known for having like one of the best HDR in phones, but it got the exposure of that perfectly. Well, the iPhone did, I mean. Oh, by the way, as you guys are watching this video, my comparison, camera comparison of the Pixel 9 Pro XL and the 16 Pro Max is almost finished. It's coming out in a couple days, so definitely stay tuned because that video is going to be interesting. So what about the battery life? Well, during these three days, it's been excellent. Even though I am running the iOS 18 beta because I want to try out the, the AI capabilities because they're not in the official iOS 18 yet. So after all of that, I took my phone off the charger at 7.30 in the morning. I did a ton of photos, videos, testing out the AI capability, high brightness because I was outside in the sun, 90 degree weather, which is not good for the battery life. I had around four to, well, four to four and a half hours of 5G use. And at around 9 p.m., I still had 27% battery life remaining. That's insane. Of course, this isn't really a shock because Apple really optimized iOS 18, even though I am using a beta. You have a physically larger battery, a more efficient display, a more efficient modem. So of course, all that's gonna equal better battery life. Now, as far as the camera control goes, hey, guess what? Three days later, it's still stupid. Sorry, I'm not gonna give you guys any excuses. It's just pointless. Everything that this can do, you can do so much faster on the screen. I honestly don't know why this exists. Maybe because the phone barely changed from the iPhone 15 Pro Max and Apple just wanted to add something just to get people to buy into it. And I did, I, I did buy into it. But do you guys want to know what's funny? When the first iPhone came out, Steve Jobs decided to make a full touchscreen phone because he said having physical buttons to do one dedicated thing is kind of stupid. And you know what's funny? That's kind of what this button is. It's just dedicated to press to open the open the camera, take a photo, take a video, and then and you can you can reprogram it to do some things, but couldn't you have done that with the action button, which is already re reprogrammable to do whatever you want. I don't know. Th this thing is just another action button, in my opinion. That's it. Uh, uh, I'm done talking about it. I'm not going to mention it in any future video, maybe. But yeah, it's 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 stupid. The only thing I will ever use the action button for, <laughs> the action button, I did it again. The only thing I will use the camera capture button for is literally to just open the camera. That's it. That's its main purpose. But having a dedicated button to do that is just silly. Look, look what Android's doing. You guys want to see Android? I know this is not an Android video and I don't care, but this is what Android's doing. There's no action button. There's no, there's no camera control button. There's a power button. Click it twice. You open up the camera. Apple, couldn't you have done that with, with the button that we've had on the iPhone since like the first iPhone, just the sleep wake button? Why, why can't we reprogram that to open up the camera? That, there you go. I just solved your camera control issue button. So three days with the iPhone 16 Pro Max, it's a good phone. It's a safe phone. 
Don't upgrade if you have the iPhone 15 Pro Series. Don't upgrade if you have the iPhone 14 Pro Series, honestly. If you have the iPhone 13 Series, maybe upgrade, maybe, I, I don't know, up, up to you. If your phone works and it works well, your battery is good, don't upgrade. So if you guys enjoyed this video and my honesty because I bought this iPhone with my own money, Apple didn't send it to me, and even if they did, I would still laugh at the camera capture button. So if you guys did enjoy today's video, click that like button, and if you're new here, you want to see a lot more tech videos, definitely subscribe and hit that bell icon so you'll be notified when my next video drops. And as always, this was Mark from Arx Tech. Adios.